you. With us now, Philip Mudd, former counterterrorism official, CIA and FBI. A uh, huge fan of your work for a very long time. I'm so glad we're, we're getting to talk. Um, I'm going to put aside the foreign policy uh, mumbo jumbo for a minute. Uh, this headline caught my, caught my eye. People are asking what will explode next. Has Israel now opened up a whole new type of warfare? That's a good question. I mean, I thought living here in America, I got a cell phone, I got a laptop. What will explode in my life if we have an engagement, for example, with China? Let me give you a slightly different perspective on this. I'm not sure I'd worry about my cell phone exploding. I don't have a walkie-talkie. I don't have a, a, a pager. What I'd worry about is a more subtle form of intelligence and in national security, and that is if we get into a conflict, even a cold conflict, what happens if somebody has codes to your local water system? What, if, what happens if they have codes to the way that you transfer money? So my question wouldn't necessarily be whether somebody, and we have 330 million Americans in this country, whether somebody could blow up my page or cell phone. My question would be whether they have access, access to software codes that could really wreck my life for a day, a week, a month, or a year. So you think about it, um... This is the week the new iPhones come out, and uh, FlightAware, one of my favorite websites, was tracking all of the iPhone flights, right? The 747s from UPS flying over yeah. with all the iPhones from China. You, you don't worry that the Chinese, forget even having a back door to blow it up, which is pretty remarkable what the Israelis uh, did. But they don't, do they have a, if they just had a back door to turn it off, and all of a sudden all our iPhones didn't work, what would we do? Uh, maybe, again, not something I would worry about. What I worry about is if you get really hot and heavy, Leland, if you get hot and heavy in terms of a conflict, where does my water come from? Where does my electricity come from? Where, to, where do emergency services come from and how do they communicate, for example, with walkie-talkies? I'd worry about the ability to disrupt America's ability to communicate on things that are vital for everyday life. How do I get my water? How do I get my electricity? Yeah. That's all now digital, as you know. Communications is important, but that's more personal. How I can talk to my siblings, how I can talk to my spouse. I would worry about whether my water system shuts down. That's what I'd be concerned about. Now, we know the Chinese, uh, I think it was something like 100 to 1 of the hackers that they have versus what um, we yeah. have. You were, at CIA, you were at CIA, right, where they have, um, they have the Special Activities Division. They have uh, yeah. the Technical Directorate. D did we ever put explosives in pagers? I don't remember putting explosives in pagers, but we put explosives on drones. I don't want to get too personal so that I don't get a call from the CIA tonight. But if you, if you would think about a rough parallel in terms of America's technical capabilities, Israel's technical capabilities, when we went into Afghanistan after 9-11, when we chased al-Qaeda, people look at, the, at things like arrests of al-Qaeda members, they look at things like drone explosions, Boy, let me tell you something, Leland. Technically, where we made a living was all kind of technical mistakes. When they communicated wrong, when they used the wrong devices, when they made mistakes about using code words that we could break, I don't want to get into this, but in 2001, 2002, 2003, they made a lot of mistakes. We lived not off our capabilities. We're not all geniuses. We lived off technical mistakes, and we ate them alive. Any any fun stories of of things the agency tried to do or places they tried to put explosives? Come on, We're just us talking. Well, I tried to put explosives. I remember some fun stories I could tell you. I don't remember stories about explosives. I okay, I'll tell you one. This is really off, sort of off um, campus, if you will, in terms of stories. I went to talk to Dick Cheney once about how we eliminated Al Qaeda and how we used drones to do it. And I brought a laptop, and the laptop didn't work. I went to his residence. He was putting a tie on. He was drinking his coffee. I hit play, and the laptop, in terms of explaining how we ran some of our technical operations, including drone operations, thank God I brought, a uh, at, at that point, a CD-ROM, because the tech guys at CI said, don't worry about it. Your laptop's good to go. It died on me. So Dick Cheney's looking at me. We're one on one. I'm drinking a latte with him. And he's like, What up? I don't see the video. And I said, Don't worry, I got a CD ROM. I could have croaked, man. I, it just was not a good day. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.